I'd like to welcome everyone to our first April board meeting. Uh, we'll call the uh, meeting to order and uh, rise from pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd like to welcome once again, before we get started, uh, Mr. Ard's uh, participation in government class, who is, so we understand, watching, uh, attending the meeting, I guess, remotely. Welcome. Nice to know you're there, even though we can't see you. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, you can hear and follow along. Um, it's always fun to have uh, students involved. So, uh, Regarding the consent agenda, we're going to pull uh, items 1101, 1102, and 1103 and address those separately uh, in the context of the budget presentation, budget adoption uh, item, agenda item. So uh, other than 1101, 1102, and 1103, are there any comments uh, from the board regarding consent agenda items? I don't have any questions. I just had one type question about the volunteer coaches for the spring sports. I don't, I don't know if that's something new or if that's something that we've traditionally had volunteer coaches. Uh, I think volunteer coaches have been around for a while, and, and Steve, you can jump in. Um, you know, it's, it's just great that you know people who want to uh, get involved and coach. You know, oftentimes they're, you know, they're the younger ones. Um, you know learning uh, and then they kind of move up the ranks so now now we've they've been i mean even back to when i was principal we've got volunteer coaches Thank you. yeah i remember it when my own uh my children participated in sports often it's uh it's back to graduates too who are able to help out that way yeah. great opportunity for them kind of learning experience yeah pretty yeah, typically baseball i remember pretty, it, pretty it's good to have people who want to volunteer yeah you know yeah so, you know, a lot of hours and, yeah. Dan, anything? I have none. Okay. I have no comments myself. So, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, apart from 1101, 1102, and 1103? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? None. So. Consent agenda items are approved uh, for zero. So with that, we've approved uh, uh, five new teachers uh, for tenure. So we want to pause and uh, acknowledge uh, that and, and congratulate them. Many of them are here on our screen. It looks like uh, Hollywood Squares, right? But, uh, <laughs> they are here. And we actually are going to have uh, a few words about each one. So, uh, who wants to go first? Who wants to jump? Mr. Rogers, come on. Hero is a. So, hang in there, uh, people at home. Uh, here we go, Mr. Rogers. Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is actually a, something that I really enjoy doing. Um, and, you know, to be able to be here uh, in front of the board tonight and uh, have my teachers that are going to be getting tenure even though they're not physically here up on the screen, uh, it's really a proud, proud moment. Uh, and I'm not saying that lightly. Uh, I have two, two people that I'll uh, be introducing tonight um, that I'm very grateful are with me at the high school. So why don't I start with uh, Jessica Fletcher. Jessica Fletcher is our computer science teacher. She uh, had tenure before coming to us, so this is tenure after three years uh, with me at the high school. And during that time, uh, I've had the pleasure of watching that program uh, grow immensely. Uh, the amount of student interest uh, in the classes that she uh, teaches is just, you know, tenfold. Uh, she also brought uh, another AP class on board and this AP class uh, tends to attract a, a bigger continuum of students. 
uh, that are interested in computer science, and that's exactly uh, what, what the case was. <coughs> in addition, we've talked uh, at board meetings and we've seen on, on the news how important it is to uh, bring uh, uh, females, women, into the STEM field. And, you know, that interest starts in school, in high school, middle school and in high school. And the number of females that are now in those classes and the computer club that she runs is just, is just wonderful to see. So uh, she's bringing those goals to fruition, and I'm, I'm extremely proud uh, of that as well. Um, but it goes beyond just the students. Uh, Jessica Fletcher also became a tech fellow, which makes sense because this is a real strength of hers. But man, what timing, right? With, with COVID coming on board. So during her free time, which she doesn't have a ton of, uh, she spends uh, working with Marcella and uh, with our teachers at the high school providing support and providing PD. So, you know, we have one Marcella, you know, Marcella is spread out throughout the district. I'm extremely lucky to have Jessica at, you know, at the high school and uh, she's well utilized. Uh, she can tell you that, I can promise you that. So with that, I just want to say congratulations. Um, you know, and on top of everything else, it's also nice to have somebody who's just a good person, a kind person, a decent person. So she's the, uh, she's the whole package. So with that, congratulations. Jessica. Next person I'll introduce is Julie Pino Kelsey. And she's not new to our district. She also had tenure, uh, so she was three years with us. And in 2010, uh, she was uh, working here at the high school. And uh, fantastic teacher, loved her, uh, kids loved her, and unfortunately we had some uh, cutbacks in terms of positions. She was part-time then, and uh, she spent six years at, at Arlington. Now when the position came up again, uh, you know, the board knows, Dr. Fanuelli knows, everybody, just how difficult it is to get a foreign language teacher, let alone someone who's fantastic. Uh, you know, that is uh, quite an accomplishment for us that she, that she came back. Um, she is just a, a pleasure to watch in class. You know, obviously I do observations. Uh, she's a very proficient teacher. She knows her craft very well. But to see kids enjoying themselves, you know, laughing, smiling, wanting to be there is, you know, is, is wonderful. She also gives back uh, to the administration. She shares, she alternates years with another foreign language teacher uh, as a department chair. So she works closely with myself, closely with Ken Lewis uh, on scheduling um, and testing, uh, recommendations for curriculum, and she works with the department as well. So again, I'm so lucky and I, I wish you all the best, Julie, and congratulations. Congratulations, Julie. Julie and I have worked together many years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So there are you up next? Absolutely. Good evening, everybody, and uh, like Mr. Malkashir had said, uh, you know, tenure is uh, just such an important milestone, uh, not only for the individual teacher, but also for us, for the district, because you become part of our family. And many people know Mr. Malkashir was at uh, Todd Middle School for a long time, so it's kind of like having, you know, our uncle here, too. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, we... Uh, Middle school is a very unique place. Teaching at a middle school is, is, is not for everybody. And, um, and when we find teachers that, that fit the middle school model, it's, it's, it's a great find. And both of these teachers uh, are definitely middle school teachers. Um, at, similar to uh, Steve, one is a computer teacher and the other is a foreign language teacher. 
Uh, both of those positions are unique positions. Uh, I'll talk first about Alex Houtman, our computer teacher. And it's unique because um, for, for his position, you have to look at multiple domains and content areas. You know, computer covers a lot of things. It covers STEM slash STEAM. It covers ELA. It covers social studies with social media. There's always math involved. So it's, it's, it's a really unique position. Um, Alex's background was, uh, was in math. He was a math teacher. Uh, personally and avocationally, I don't know if that's a word, but he is really into engineering, computer technology. It's just in him. Uh, some of you might have seen him on his sort of scooter thing that he rides around with. He loves technology. He loves current trends uh, in, tech, in games. Um, in technology and in all things computer, and he really relates to the students. You know, students can, uh, he's, um, uh, what he, he knows what their interests are as well. Um, as, a, as a classroom teacher, he has a really unique schedule because he sees every Todd student, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, every year. Because that's the way that schedule is built. You know, he sees every student for 10 weeks. He has quarterly classes, so it's a really unique thing. So it's not something, uh, it's not that you can just do so easily. Because it's like the first day of school four times a year, where you just have students, you have to start, you know, anybody who's a teacher knows what that involves, with kind of laying down classroom routines and all that, and he's just done a great job with it. Uh, teaching, he's always, you know, giving the students challenging lessons. He really uses sort of uh, the language of computers as a way to kind of bring content to, te to students. Uh, his content's relevant, it connects students to the future, uh, he does hands-on activities, he has, you know, different, um, he has both computer things, but also uh, things that can make models and things like that. And, um, you know, we're just really happy that, I remember, it seems like yesterday, because his father came when we appointed him to the board meeting here, and it seems like it was yesterday. Uh, you know, it's just time flies. Uh, he's also a tech fellow. Uh, Similar to Ms. Fletcher, and also uh, he's been the coach of our, our modified girls soccer team. And I think it was his first year he had an undefeated season. So that's something uh, that we're very proud of and that he was proud of. So, uh, so Alex, congratulations. Um, tenure is such an important thing. And I, and I must say that uh, getting tenure in the Spack and, cool, Spack and Kill School District is just even that, that much more because it is a, a wonderful family. Um, and a great place to continue to learn professionally. So congratulations. Congratulations, Alex. You got another motion, Mr. I do, and Paula Daunt, which similar, uh, in, in a different way, but, but also similarly, it is a very unique position, uh, not only in Todd, but also in the Spack Kill School District. Paula is our French teacher. Uh, there are only two French teachers in the district, so they basically are the program. You know, so the French program is uh, Paula Dawn and Mrs. Hart up at the high school. And um, she, you know, she meets with the fifth grade to kind of go over foreign language, to kind of uh, expose them to the different choices. You know, as everybody knows, we have French and Spanish here. Uh, and she has, her students, she has every year. So similar to, to Alex. Alex has all the students, but she has all the French students because that, that, so there's definitely, and you can see it happen from sixth grade through eighth grade, very much becomes a family uh, with all of those things that families, that are involved in families. Uh, you know, so it's, she gets to really know them well, gets to know the families. Uh, Paula's background uh, was uh, in ENL and French instruction at Tuxedo District. She was there for many years and she taught actually pretty much K-12. I mean, she taught everything. And um, part of what she brings to us is she has a lot of con. She loves trips. So we, and unfortunately, obviously, with what's been going on uh, over the past year, we haven't been able to do those. But she has contacts in France and uh, in Canada, and many contacts with French-speaking teachers and schools. And even though we, she is not physically gone. Now, in the second year in a row, she's had basically like a foreign language exchange program with students uh, in France, which is great. They send letters to each other and, um, you know, and they get to know each other, you know, and it's been great. Uh, she was kind of, a, a, kind of ahead of it because she was doing it last year before the pandemic. And then when the pandemic hit, it was kind of there already. It was something that everybody started doing. I, I shouldn't say that. 
not everybody started doing that, but everybody started kind of using that technology, and, and she was kind of doing that last year. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, her classroom, uh, you would probably hear singing and see movement and dancing and chat and chanting, and I have even uh, witnessed that remotely, so it's pretty, you know, in the middle of the, you know, when, when things sometimes, you know, and things have been dark from time to time, you know, without a doubt during the past year, but to see students in their living rooms up doing the movements, you know, uh, remotely, is, it's, just, it's just something that's special uh, to see, and, and Paula brings that. Uh, Paula's instruction's a mix of language and culture, and uh, she tries to cover it all, and she does a great job with it. And, you know, one thing I, I, in my notes that I took was the students are engaged, and, and Paula is very engaged in the lesson. You know, she's up, she's about. Um, you know, finally, um, I, and part of it is because it is like a family, and, and also it is just kind of who she is, uh, the social-emotional well-being of her students are important to her, and that's something that's really important, I think, for middle school instructors. So, uh, all similar to Alex, congratulations. Uh, we're, we're, we're grateful that you're here, and, um, and you should feel very proud of yourself, as we feel proud of you as well. Congratulations, Paula. Um, good speakers. All right, who's going to try to top that? Who's next? All right, Mr. Lynch. Oh, yeah, try your remote. All right, Mr. Lynch is going to talk. I was looking for you in the crowd. <laughs> Not much of a crowd, but I'm looking for it. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak about Emily Albers, um, our Nassau English language learner teacher. Um, and while I wasn't in Spack and Kill when Emily was hired, uh, like all of us, whether we like it or not, um, we've gotten to know each other very, very, uh, very well throughout this pandemic. Um, and through this time, I would just say about Emily, uh, I've, I've found her to be uh, kind, uh, extremely, extremely reflective, uh, dedicated, loyal, collaborative, hardworking, um, among many other things. And I just want to share, I promise it'll be brief, um, but a quick story um, about Emily that actually uh, stems from a, a parent um, that I interacted with over the phone several times, um, actually through a really, a really tough time kind of in their life through the pandemic. Uh, but I think it really uh, describes Emily and, and the impact um, that not only she's having on our students, but I would say uh, also our families. Uh, so recently, one of Emily's kindergarten students was quarantined for an extended amount of time. Um, and for this particular parent, I happened to be the one that called to let them know that they would be on the quarantine. And this was very early on, so we hadn't done much of this at the time. Um, and as you can imagine, they were, they were disappointed uh, they were confused, they were concerned. Um, I would even go as far as to say they, they were scared. Um, luckily, I was, I was also the person that was able to call several days later uh, to give them the good news that their son could return. Um, so within this conversation, which was very emotional, uh, this, this parent um, went out of her way very emotionally um, to talk about Mrs. Albers. Um, the parents said, Mr. Lynch, Mrs. Albers constantly, constantly called our house to check up on us. Mrs. Albers dropped by our house to drop us off things that she bought with her own money. Mrs. Albers reworked her schedule to make time for my son and I'll never be able to repay her. I actually called that parent again today to um, get some of her exact wording that, that she had used uh, several months ago. But I would say this is exactly what we want from our teachers. Um, however, I would say it's especially what we want from our teachers that teach our youngest students with families that are just entering in the district. <clears throat> Emily shows her family, some of which uh, know, know English. And one of the things Emily does is she translates for them. Um, she shows those families who are trying to navigate our community and our school system 
that as a district and as a school that we're kind, that we're understanding, that we're caring, and that we're loyal to them. Um, we hope this team approach trickles up for our families as they grow and attend the other schools. Um, and I, I, I can't say enough about Emily and the relationships that she's established with these families. So um, thank you, Emily, for all that you do. Uh, congratulations on tenure. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to us working together for, for many years to come. Congratulations, Emily. Eric, very nice words. Um, you know, I will be speaking to you later about, about making people cry during meetings. Uh, but uh, that was definitely uh, very, very kind words. Everyone receiving tenure is, is an honor. Uh, you know, especially receiving tenure, I think as uh, Mr. Malkshire and Mr. Doherty said, you know, into this back and kill family is, uh, you know, it is a very big honor. We are thrilled um, that, you, that you have um, and, you, and you are here with us tonight. Um, it's fantastic. Be proud. Um, you know, enjoy it. You, you've earned it. Um, and we are going to continue to uh, look forward to all the things you accomplish, you know, as a teacher in the district. It doesn't stop now. It keeps going. Um, but uh, we're, we're, th we're thrilled to have uh, your energy, enthusiasm, dedication, you know, here in our district. So thank you, uh, everyone, and congratulations again on achieving tenure. Um, you could leave after this. You don't have to stay because I'm sure you got a plan for tomorrow. But uh, one final round of applause uh, for, for everyone. Thoughts or comments from, from any, any of you you'd like to share? No, I just, I just want to say uh, congratulations to all of you. And our students are very fortunate to have such a dedicated uh, staff supporting them. So welcome and thank you again. I, I, I also want to say thank you for all you've done and all you are going to do. Um, teachers are the, the heart of the district. They are the district. They're the, the people who stay. Students come and go. Parents come and go. Administrators are more likely to come and go. But you, you are it. And so thank you for, for all you do. Um, as you know, it's, it's you change lives and change futures. So thank you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's great to watch all of you accept the, uh, the, the kind words from our administrators and uh, it's just uh, it's, it's really a fantastic thing. So we're happy to we're happy to have you. Thank you very much for all you do. You know, I just added, you know, at a moment like this, especially uh, regrettable that we can't, you know, be meeting in person because this is such a fun time to be able to shake your hands and share a few words. Um, and I, you know, I, I feel absolutely what what uh, everyone else has expressed. You know, the teachers are the core of the district. You know, that they are the identity. And it's, it's so wonderful to see, you know, this kind of accomplishment because as, as uh, Mr. Doherty said, it really is a two-way kind of thing. I mean, it's a great accomplishment for you individually, but it, it confirms uh, the judgment that the district, you know, uh, exercised in, in hiring you and attracting you to our district to begin with. And it's, it's so rewarding and, and we're so appreciative of the, uh, of the qualities that you add to our district and to see the kind of commitment that you're making to our district as well. Um, the district's uh, confident in making a commitment to you, but, but you're all making a commitment to our district and we're so grateful for that. Um, thank you and, and we look forward to getting to know you a little bit in person uh, down the road when we can all get back to that. So thanks again, congratulations. Thank you, congrats. So with that, we move to uh, the budget, uh, right? 201? Yeah, we're up to the uh, presentation. So uh, Ms. Maloney and myself will uh, be presenting. Um, she is there. Um, yeah, for the present. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Matt, come on. Hit it at the top of the There you go. <laughs> <laughs>
Be able to see yep, it's working. You have the controller? Be able to see All right, I'm going to start, uh, and I'll uh, introduce some of these slides are similar, uh, especially the beginning ones are similar, just kind of a reminder of where we are. So uh, first slide is kind of setting the tone. Uh, this is what we're going to review. Um, the, the first part, you know, in the very end are going to be similar, but uh, we are um, going to, you know, a couple will be a little different, um, and we're also going to go over the contingency budget. Um, in, in detail um, tonight so that everyone is aware of that. All right, so just to kind of set the tone, what are the responsible decisions? Next slide. Um, again, this slide is a repeat, but it, 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 does, uh, it does deserve repeating. Um, you know, what are responsible decisions? Presenting a budget that is under the tax cap. This is something that we were uh, working diligently to do. Maintaining a smaller student-centered learning environment. Uh, communicating the academic successes of the district and promoting the economic you know, vitality of the Spectacular Union Free School District. Seeking additional revenues through out-of-district tuition program. We spoke about that last time. And really, you know, this proposed budget is well under the tax cap once again. That was really um, the key to everything. Next slide. So the state budget economy, uh, we have conservatively budgeted our state revenue forecast in this budget, as we reported last time. Um, what is the impact of the economic downturn in, in COVID on this budget? We talked about that. Our reserves are still healthy, and that is obviously a plus. The Comptroller's fiscal stress report was positive. We reviewed that last time. Um, reminder, we're still in a pandemic. Uh, it is ever-changing, as we've learned uh, over the weekend when some, you know, some guidelines came out. Um, you know, we're reviewing on a day-to-day -day basis, and that continues. Um, that's really been that's really been this year. It's it's really been, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Once in a while, two consecutive days remain the same, um, but uh, uh, we are definitely, uh, you know, reviewing everything on a day-to-day -day basis. So next slide. Um, again, review the key cost budget drivers. Um, for uh, this budget are listed here. This is uh, a review. So take a look again, you know, uh, salaries, health insurance, BOCES, the retirements, uh, debt service, um, the total, the percentage of the budget is 85, and there is a little bar across of it that's 48, um, that's covered, you know, 48, uh, 9. Next one, you can see the numbers a little more clearly. So the proposed budget um, is 48.9. Uh, last year's budget was 48.06. Uh, Increase amount is you know over 800,000. Uh, uh, the budget uh, percent increase, budget to budget is 1.83. The estimated tax levy is 1.97. And our estimated tax levy is over 500,000, 555,000 under um, our you know, allowable tax levy. And that is something that we try to do you know, from the start uh, to really uh, you know, hear what the uh, community and the board, board was saying. Uh, Ms. Maloney is going to take over in a moment. Uh, you know, Ms. Maloney, I've been doing a lot of talking. Do you want to you you go now? Are you there? Yes, I'm right here. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the next slide we've seen before, it's a reminder that this is the calculation that we are required to send to the state controller's office on their website. The calculation is pretty much done by then, them after we supply numbers. But the two important numbers here are because we've had, we have exclusions for capital projects and state aid. Our allowable tax increase under the tax cap would be 3.77%. We are not asking for that kind of money. I think Dr. Fanuelli um, explained that a little more in depth at the last meeting. And the final number is the 1.7% increase. We're asking for the 1.97% increase. Okay. This slide we had before, we are required by New York State 
they give us the codes that are considered to be administrative program and capital. So we're required to break that out. You'll see that program is almost 37 million of the 48 million of the budget capital, which includes debt service and all of our facilities, maintenance, utility charges, um, we're under capital, that's 6.9. And the top slide with all of BOCES administrative costs, um, tax collection, legal, uh, business office, any of their administrators is $4 million of the budget. And we just put a slide on the right to show the, uh, the breakdown of the components. This is a reminder that on the ballot will be a second proposition. The board approved it at the last board meeting uh, for a bus, a bus reserve prop that we've we've had this established uh, reestablished in 2016-17 it has been long standing we've asked for it to be a 5 year on um, the voters will be voting on this separate and then next year if we decide and the board decides that we need to purchase buses we have to ask for approval again and um, we've been looking back and forth at uh, a 5 year purchasing and pricing analysis to determine funding level recommendations um, I want to put a caveat on the last bullet. Sometimes we'll take a bus in for DOT inspection um, and for what it, and they have a whole checklist of things they have to go through. Sometimes they'll come back and they'll say to us, this won't pass inspection due to this, this, and this. And we have to look and see if it's cost prohibited to put in the money for the repairs, to trade it in, to sell it, or to get a new vehicle. Um, and the request that we asked, because I have it on this slide, it should have said that the board approved us to request from the community $600,000 over a five-year period for the amount of buses. And we can um, put the money into the reserve anytime over those five years so we don't have to do that money all at once. Okay, next. Contingency budget requirements. Basically what it said is that at the time you adopt your budget, um, we have to, uh, the board has to adopt a contingency budget um, we would have to go to a contingency budget if the voters vote down the budget and the board decides to go directly to a contingency. If they voted down, the voters voted down twice, um, they, they, they would, have, it would automatically go to a contingency budget. Um, the budget revote is on the third Tuesday in June if we were to have it. Um, and pretty much the contingency budget, your levy cannot be as, any higher than last year. On the agenda for tonight is for us to approve this contingency budget um, a resolution to adopt it. Um, and then what we can do is um, we can get into any specifics on any cuts, and I'll go over that in a moment. So for right now, the current tax levy was $30,871,000. Our current levy that we talked to the board about um, was $31,480,000. We have some required reductions that New York State says that we cannot have if we're under a contingency budget. One of which is student supplies. These costs are pretty difficult to determine. We're very conservative with a number of 42,500. Equipment, unless it's a health and safety concern, and we can really um, put it through the lawyers to make sure it is, cannot be in a contingency budget. Currently, we have 201,000 in the budget for equipment. Each year we have a mini cap project of 100,000. That, that's not allowed to be in there. Transfer to other funds, that would be a transfer to school lunch fund. And for next year, because of the pandemic, we increase that by 15,000 um, to 60,000. So the required cuts right now are $403,918. We would still be required to cut 204,000. And what we would, um, project is not to um, impact any staff. We would look at supplies. We would look at preventative maintenance, things that we've done, and we would look at um, BOCES. One of the things that we could look at um, with, throughout the BOCES the closer is not knowing, not knowing where we're gonna be next year with COVID, we have money in the budget for um, professional development classes like in-person, travel for conferences. We left that money in there in the event that we're able to do that. So it's not really a tough cut to get to 204, the 204,000 that we need. I know there's some districts that um, you know, are still looking to get three quarters of a million or a million dollars um, to reduce. So we're not looking to cut anything as far as athletics or anything like that. 
so that's that's what we're recommending for a contingency budget and then we have the budget vote is the, a reminder that it's the 18th currently as dr fanny Miller said things change day to day hopefully it stays the same because we're prepared to do in-person voting at the high school and um we voting on the spending plan which we haven't changed since the last meeting with the board two board of ed trustees one for a four-year term which would finalize um former president key's term and one for a five-year term and then reestablish the capital bus reserve the last slide that i have um is uh, the link to the budget documents on our website next Sandra. Dr. Fanuel, you want to take it home? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, uh, if you go back two slides, just, just to remind everyone, and she did it just, just the budget vote, it is uh, May 18th. You know, have that on your uh, calendar. It's in person, you know, at, at the high school, you know, in the auditorium where, where it usually is. 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And it is three things, or really four things, you know, the budget and the capital uh, bus reserve and then two trustees. Uh, positions so I know that Michelle said that but just want to review that and that's probably a good place to leave the slides uh, really the last slide you know is there any questions or any any comments from the board um, you know about uh, what we presented or what we presented last week um, we will take that now and then after that I guess uh, you would uh, vote on uh, the, the ones you haven't voted on yet right and just leave this line up because that's the reminder Questions or comments? So I got a, maybe just a refresh. At the last uh, presentation, we outlined all the additional uh, enhancements to our district, right? We're gonna add uh, additional, formalize the assistant superintendent, we're going to have to hire another principal. Uh, we to invest in more PD, and we're going to do summer programs if, if feasible. So, so we got we add a lot more programs for our students. So basically, we kind of have uh, everything we want, right? I mean, the budget based on your budget, we're going to be able to do all that that, that was stated at the last day. Uh, uh, cover everything. That is correct. You did a good job of capturing that. Um, you know, uh, we, we did go over the previous two board meetings, everything, but we could review it again if anyone has a, a question about some of that. You know, we, had, we talked about our COVID return plan uh, with the summer programs. Uh, we talked about Mr. Farrell moving up and, and really uh, adding equity um, as, as, a, as a big focus for us next year and hiring um, and, of course, the COVID uh, response plan so um thank you for stating that but does anyone have any questions about that well no i'm just saying that that it, we didn't put it bare bones but it's a very uh, robust budget uh, uh, program that we're putting in place now the, the other piece i guess is uh, subsequent to that presentation uh, we we've gotten some additional updates outlooks on our state aid and maybe you know, I saw some of the data. Maybe we need some clarification on where we at from a state aid perspective, because there seems to be a lot of information in the press about how much a lot of school districts have gotten uh, all this state state aid. I mean, uh, even even in the you know state funding, I mean, it shows that we were. I mean, it shows significant increase. So I don't know what the actual numbers are, and maybe you could kind of outline what that is. Sure, I mean, it's a very good question. Um, Michelle's going to pop on in a second. And maybe uh, have flip, flip back to so Michelle is seen by everyone when she speaks now. Um, we're still processing all that. The papers like to report things, but there's a, there's a, lo there's a lot of uh, information that has to be disseminated, you know, in order to figure out exactly where that money goes. Uh, Michelle, do you want to start? And I will uh, uh, jump in uh, based on... Uh, what you say? Sure. Um, before I do that, I forgot to say that um, I was in a bad spot following all those um, those tenure recommendations, so I was a little nervous about starting this for everybody. Um, our, if you look at just the detail from the state aid run, 
and you were to take at base value everything that was there, the increase was one point, approximately $1.3 million. Um, one of the things that changed, and I don't want to get too detailed or too technical on this, is if you remember the governor came out with his number um, last time and he consolidated everybody, and we just got a number for um, what they called services aid. So transportation aid, all the other aids were in there and was really not possible for us to dig deep into how much was both these, how much was transportation. So um, now this time they pulled out the BOCES aid and all these different types of aids. Um, we will know more. We're going to be supposed to be receiving guidance from SED at the end of the month regarding both the federal stimulus packet. They're supposed to come out with something in writing at the end of the month. And we will know more in the details of the state aid. What I can tell you from looking at it is that um, at the very minimum, transportation aid is projected too high because of the COVID. We do not. We are not going to have those expenses to generate the aid that's on that sheet for next year. Our BOCES aid, um, it looks high um, again, and each year it usually is. Um, what happens is the state takes a database from back in November. Well, back in November, um, we put this information in, in August and September. Um, we didn't expect to be um, short with transportation, short with both these expenditures. So as soon as we can get concrete numbers, um, we will. There's several um, several uh, training programs coming in. Um, business officials have been talking in Dutchess County constantly about trying to figure out where this is. The state aid um, is really a lot different than it has been in the past. Um, and the other piece is that the uh, federal stimulus money, um, there, is no, there is no guidance, except we can't count for it in the general fund, and that they're gonna have that information out by the end of the month. Okay, now the other question is, uh, if I take a look at that state run, the delta between the latest run and, and the previous run was like over two million, right? So can you at some point, maybe not tonight, but help bridge to how you get to the 1.3 and what's the net benefit to the school district at that point? I mean, maybe by the end of the month. As soon as we get all the formulas so that we can run them based on where we think the numbers are going to be, we'll be happy to provide it. Um, I'll just give you a quick example, going through the transportation um, number, we just see a number out here. We see $1.4 million um, for transportation aid. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, $1.472. Um, we have to go into all the details on that. There's like, it's like the IRS tax code, I think I've said before. It's a three page calculation with different numbers. It's based on um, like attendance, um, how, how rich or poor the school district is, um, what our aid ratio is what's summer miles, what's allowable, what's not allowable. So I, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to get too technical, but it, it's not it's not an easy process. And it's not just throwing like a, a dart at a dartboard and say, okay, we'll do 1.2 million next year. But as soon as we have that information, uh, we will provide that. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. I don't have any questions. Sure. Oof. Questions or comments? Anyone? Um, I don't have any questions. I just um, feel the same way that I felt last time we met with this budget is that it seems like it's very um, reasonable, covers all of our all of our uh, programs, our plans, the you know, in a robust way. And it seems responsible to our taxpayers which I think has been really on our minds a lot during this year, and, um, and but also responsible to our student population, which, um, and their, their needs, which we're um, predicting and focusing on. So I, I um, don't have any questions on the budget. Dan? Yeah. Um, Michelle, is the 1.3 million increase above what you had anticipated before, or is it is, is that the number that you're using in the budget number now? It's the exact number that SED sent down to us, and that's above 
what we projected last time and we had to start to cut some numbers. The other piece I'll tell you is that right now they put in the budget for this year, they gave us $162,000 for universal pre-K. We have to discount that immediately because we don't get that. So Dan, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, I, I, I would just comment on the budget here really quick as well. Uh, I, we, we've definitely spoken about a lot of things that we're looking to do here. Um, and, and I've tried to make a point of trying to do the best we possibly can for our students while also being fiscally responsible for all of our communities. So it's really important for me that, that I saw a number that I thought was reasonable, uh, a reasonable increase in the levy. Um, and I guess the, the last thing I would, I would ask, because this is still a little confusing to me, is if more state aid comes in than we're anticipating, does that get passed on to the community or how does that affect the levy? Because we're going to be potentially approving a levy number tonight, right? So how does that go ahead in the future if we end up getting more from the state and how, how that can be a benefit to our community as, as a relief. I'm assuming that some of the legislation behind this was was twofold, right? I'm, I'm thinking that some of the legislation was to fill gaps and, and, and help catch students up that might have fallen behind, but to also provide some relief to the community in a time when they can use it. So if you can comment on that, I'd appreciate it. Sure, Dr. Finnelli, okay? Yeah, you can start and then I'll go. Okay. So um, if we get more state aid in this year than has been done in the, like, than we projected, and this has happened to us, at the end of the year, um, we, it come, falls to our fund balance, which could help reduce next year's tax, um, tax burden for the community. If there is an urgent need for something, you could appropriate some of that money into the budget um, if, if you wanted to. Um, that, that, those are the two really good options that we would have right now. Because at some point, you know, we, 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 have, we have very good reserves and healthy, but at some point, um, and I can't speak directly to it, but we're going to have a funding cliff with this federal money. So one year is just going gonna, gonna to start to fall off. So we have to be prepared for that and be prudent. Um, but um, right now, with the state aid, that's what usually happens. If we get extra money in for um, special needs kids or things like that, some of those we use to drive it to help with the expenditures. So Michelle, I, I got a follow-up uh, question. Dan, I hope, can I follow? Please, please do. So, so, so my own question is, so does that mean that if there is a, a, a significant increase, then it probably makes sense that you don't focus on recurrent programs, but more on, on, on one where it might be a definitive time period. So if you do face a fiscal cliff, you don't have a significant issue, and second part is, uh, is the other option is that you could use it towards exclusions, like capital, reducing your capital uh, obligations, or well, you can't. Uh, you're on mute. I, I, oh, I'm going to say no, you can't, but you're on mute. Go ahead. Sure. It, we, could, we could use it um, for debt service, you know, for next year, if we were to have significant increases. I believe you had um, previously asked, and we said that, after next year, we'll, we should be flat with our debt service, but that extra aid um, will help us balance our budget. So um, we can't just pay off stuff. We can't we can't just pay off bonds. We can't pay them off early. We've checked interest rates are so low. We can't refinance in them right now. But yes, in some ways, the the, the revenue is going to help offset the expenses in the future. Okay, good. thank you. But what she's also saying is, you know. The we try to come in low on the budget so that it doesn't fluctuate or change, you know, from this from today on. Um, that'll be it. Um, but anything that's huge, we will apply and use uh, for the future. But uh, just one more question or comment, right? I mean, in terms of the mechanics in terms of setting the levy, right? I mean, you really have up until August 1st to do that, right? I mean, if there's a lot of change, either positive or negative, that impacts the district, 
You could, but if you go any lower, we're no, going to no. be three years from now. You're going to be begging to, to to have a higher tax levy, a little bit higher tax levy, because right now we're two years in a row. We're five hundred thousand this year under the tax levy, so that's eroding our base for for what we can raise for taxes. I mean, I know I think that right now, if we go any lower than what we are right now, um, it's going to it's going to affect us in a long range in a, in a negative way. Well, well and I guess the other piece they'll bring to where to help provide headlights into that outlook, that's where a five year strategic plan might help. Right? I mean a financial plan that's beyond your current planning horizon, I think that will also be helpful in terms of guiding audio operations going forward too, I think. You yeah. know? Correct. Correct. Okay, no no more questions. I don't Back to you, Dan, if you have any. <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> okay. to, me, uh, to me, what we're hearing is, you know, um, confirms, you know, the course that we've, that we've taken. I mean, while, while what we're hearing here is potentially good news as far as the state aid goes, you know, there's still a lot of uncertainty uh, as to how those numbers are going to finally uh, sort of solidify. And so uh, the decisions that we've made, uh, have been, and I think I used this phrase last time, have been, um, uh, reflective of, of a budget that is mature and is responsive rather than reactive you know and, and I see the approach that that you've taken in building this budget uh, as all those things still you know uh, it's been responsive to our needs it's been responsive to the uh, circumstances that we've been living through over this last year it's been uh, responsible in all of those respects uh, responsiveness is responsible I think at the same time uh, and it's uh, reflective, I think, of the maturity of the approach that we've taken in the past. And while it's always good, I think, to plan as far out into the future as we can, I think we're also um, confirming here that the approach that we've taken in the past has been prudent. And we're, you know, continuing that course. And that's, I think, what pleases me the most, you know, here. Uh, to me, it would be reactive rather than responsive and responsible to kind of try to bottom things out if, if you know, state aid comes in a little bit higher than we might have expected because of what Michelle was just talking about. I mean, you create problems in the future because that limits our ability to increase the budget in the future. Uh, there are limits as to how much you know, the tax levy can increase year to year, year over year. So uh, I think we have to take stock where we're at, uh, you know, uh, try to solidify, strengthen the current finances if the news is a little bit better than we might have projected and build for the future off of that. And I think that's, that's what you, know, you put in place. Thank you. So, uh, if that's uh, uh, the the um, comments and, and uh, questions from the board, I think we're ready to approve uh, the three uh, items from the consent agenda that we excluded: 1101, which is the budget itself; 1102, my numbers right; 1102 is the property tax report card; and 1103 is the contingency budget assumptions and um, budget notice. So, uh, do we have a motion to approve 1101, 1102, and 1103? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so uh, the budget is adopted for zero. Okay. All right, well, thank you. I'm um, glad we can answer some more questions, and uh, now we have a uh, the budget adapted so we will move forth with uh, producing uh, a, a newsletter uh, capturing all this and getting that out to the public but we uh, we have another presentation tonight uh, we have our secondary principals here they, they they gave us a taste of their uh, their voices and their their nice words earlier but uh, we're going to call them back mr. Mackers is going to lead us off again um, and he has a couple special guests with him uh, you know via Google, so he's going to introduce uh, them and, uh, and take it away. Mr. Rapture, it's all yours. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Uh, my guests are very busy. I just texted uh, Mr. M. They're at the high school now, uh, preparing for the for the for the play. So they'll be coming on in just a moment. There they are. <laughs> uh, so Macy Hammond is accompanied uh, by uh, Mr. M. Uh, so. I just have a few words about uh, Ms. Rem just before I kick this, before I, I, I asked them to, uh, to kind of speak. 
and that is, you know, I wanted to do something positive. You know, it's been a good year, but, you know, I just felt it would be nice to have something that would be really upbeat. And the word positive and upbeat coincide with Mr. M and Macy perfectly. These two people are always smiling and they're always positive. Uh, so we can I got, see them smiling through their masks. Right you, now. you can always see them smiling. <laughs> so, you know, chorus has been a, a challenge to teach, you know, during this pandemic. And, you know, Mr. M takes the attitude, never takes the attitude that you can't do it. It's always we can do it and we will do it and we're going to enjoy doing it. So I went to do the observation. We started out in the chorus room. There was a brief warm up with, with all of the students. And then they took everybody outside. So the board probably knows what it looks like outside of the MST room right there. It's actually the, the uh, landscape is tiered. You know, I would call it a hill. They see risers. <laughs> so all the students went out. They were all placed on three different tiers. Uh, the bottom level, second level, and then the third level. A student in Mr. M took a piano outside a computer outside so the kids that are at home could participate and they just ripped it this morning. I mean everybody was just having a fantastic time and you know to be able to pull off that curriculum in such a positive way with using the resources that I don't think most of us would have even realized existed to take advantage of that they did. So the reason I wanted uh, Mr. M to be here and Macy to be here is because I wanted them to speak a little bit about how in the world are they pulling off a live play during this pandemic? How did they prepare for a live play during this pandemic? And what is it going to look like for uh, the people that are going to come and be able to view the play? So, and we know the play is The Wedding Singer. Uh, a lot of us have seen that movie, you know, love it. Uh, but. To the two of you, how are you making this possible for us? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, thank you so much for your time, Ruth, Steve. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're so happy to, to just be able to continue to make music, create great theater, uh, and do what we're doing during such a crazy time. Um, also, because we're in theater, we love to make an entrance. Thank you for, thank you for having us. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, we're actually we're in rehearsal right now. We're in the chorus room in the auditorium right now. We've got rehearsals going on for our production of The Lighting Singer. Uh, you know, in the fall, uh, we clubs were not able to meet. You know, so 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 like every, everywhere else around the country, um, you know, things things could not be happening. So drama club, we took it upon ourselves to meet virtually with the kids. We put on a a, uh, a full production in the fall, uh, done entirely remotely. So the kids kind of were expected to create recording studios in their homes and film sets in their homes. We rehearsed the show. They recorded their own separate parts from their homes. We stitched it together uh, like, our, like our own film, and then we live streamed it out to um, the world. So, you know, after the fall production, just being grateful to do something, we went into, went into the spring knowing we wanted to do something in person, you know, give these kids a live theatrical experience. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. I'm actually going to pass that off to Macy, who's going to talk about what our rehearsals have been like since uh, starting back up in late January. Yes, yeah, so hi, I'm Macy, and I'm Vice President of Stack on Stage. And so first off, um, we met before the process even started with Mr. Malkishar and Mr. Lewis, and they were kind enough to, um, to discuss with us the safest way that we could return to in-person. And we we're happy to say that, as you can see, as we're still meeting, we've had a very ha happy and healthy return, um, and we hope to continue that way. So first, we have a lot of safety procedures in place. So obviously, everyone wears masks at all times. And every time the student comes into the building, they fill out a sheet confirming their recent activity, you know, all the standard COVID questions. Um, and then their temperature is taken by an adult. And I think that's very important. We make sure that an adult takes the temperature at all times. No other student takes temperature. You can't take your own temperature. It's always Mr. M or Mr. Dave, our director, who takes your temperature. Um, and then once all this happens, the student can head into the auditorium where we've been having all of our um, rehearsals and everyone can take a seat and all the seats in the auditorium are actually pre-marked and distant so the students can feel free to socialize but they have to do so from their socially distant seats um, and then so when you're on stage 
the students are either six feet apart if they're just standing there or speaking, and then they're 12 feet apart if they're singing or dancing. Um, and these protocols are for our safety and everyone knows that, so we've been really, really good about keeping our distance and following the rules. And yeah, we're so, we're so happy that Drama Club has been able to continue this year, and there's really nothing like practicing live theater. Um, the social aspect is amazing, and being able to talk to our friends not actually virtually, not through a screen, um, has, has been absolutely amazing. Um, so I've really been enjoyed back on stage so far this year, and hopefully you guys can come see our show. So I'm going to hand it off to Mr. M. Um, to describe how the performances are going to work. Absolutely. And we're, like I said, we're in rehearsal right now. It, it, there's nothing like it. Like you could probably tell we're like amped right now. We just finished, we just finished a big number out there. I was at piano, they were rocking out. It's just, it's, it's the best. It is. And we're just so grateful to, to be doing this. Uh, now for our live performances uh, for, for, for this production of The Wedding Singer. Now we haven't had a live performance since fall of 2019. Uh, and, our, and our production this time around is going to look a little bit different. Uh, we are going to be using our brand new football field. It will be an outdoor production, uh, socially distant with limited seating uh, for the show. Um, we're going to be moving, one of the biggest challenges that we're facing right now, but we have a great team of parent volunteers and student, um, students working on this, is we're figuring out how to move an entire stage worth of, of, of sets, of lighting equipment, of sound equipment, how do we move that to a remote location and then run a full two and a half hour musical production uh, outdoors? Uh, so we've got wonderful teams of student crews, parent volunteers, helping us every step of the way, building this set outside, taking all of our sound equipment, making sure it's being safely transported and safely uh, stored at the football field. Um, and it's, it's, it's definitely brought about a lot of uh, challenges, uh, you know, as, as people who do theater, that, that's what it is, you know, theater is about solving little problems every rehearsal, about solving, uh, finding the best way to do things given, given your set of circumstances. So um, tickets are on sale now for The Wedding Singer. Uh, we're going to go up Thursday, June, uh, Thursday, May 13th, um, Friday, May 14th, and Saturday, May 15th, um, all evening performances, like I said, at the football field. Um, like I said, we are so thrilled. Thank you guys so much for having us again. Um, and yeah, that is, that's what we've been up to. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm sure there are the right questions or comments. No. Did we get to see a trailer of the production uh, tonight? Uh, no. Oh, Macy, Macy could sing something. Right <laughs> <now. Yeah. laughs> No, thank you. You just wheel you into the next room and do yeah. that. <laughs> no, thank you for the update. I can't wait to uh, see the show. So I'm glad to go. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and let Maybe. me just say, I, I just want to thank you because you really, you know, the truth is you do really bring a tremendous amount of happiness to the high school and to our community. And at a time like this, it is so needed. And it's just, you, you're doing a beautiful thing. I know how busy you are, and thank you so much for taking the time and, and being with us this evening. It's our absolute pleasure, Steve. Thank you guys so very much. Right. Macy, I, I, I heard a rumor that made me very excited. Um, it is about your, your college choice. So you, are you able to reveal that here tonight? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm committed to the University of Scranton for the five and a half years master's program in occupational therapy. Right. And I'm actually really excited because they have a student run theater group and then also a university affiliated theater group. And currently the theater president of the student run one is an occupational therapy senior. So I'm right. just like, it just called out to me. I'm so excited. And not only that, but University of Scranton is doing Wedding Singer this spring. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you know why I'm really excited by that, right? Right, Ms. Salmon? Yes, you're an alumni. <laughs> Um, so you're going to love it. Uh, it's a great place, and I, I can't wait to hear about your experience there. So congratulations. Wow. Thank you so much. Great job. Congratulations. Done? All right, you guys are good. You can go back to practice now. Thank you. See you. Thank you guys so much for having us. everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mouser. That was quite refreshing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, nothing like seeing the, the energy of, uh, of the arts and, and the youth yeah. and a lot of pent up uh, energy there. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, now, speaking of refreshing, <laughs> Dr. Uh, or Mr. Doherty, uh, you want to uh, follow up on that refreshing? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know will, you're going to do well. Sure, I'll, I'll certainly try to. So, uh, good evening again, everybody. 
And uh, I thought for my um, for for tonight uh, my presentation, I would do. A, sometimes I do uh, specific topics. I thought I would just kind of do a general kind of view of what's been going on um, at Todd over the like, last couple of months, um, and I'll do that via uh, showing you some slides from the blast. The the board of ed gets the the Todd blast, which goes out um, Mondays, and. Um, but not the, you know, not the whole community, obviously, all the parents at Todd, but, but not, you know, K-5 and 9-12. And so I thought it would be nice to just share what's been going on with Todd. There'll be some pictures and things. And, um, and also show, um, you know, the great work that the, that the Todd Blast, uh, what it looks like and the great work that gets put into it. Um, the reason why I can show all this is because of uh, the parents, the students, and the staff at Todd. Um, because... It is. Uh, it continues even through the pandemic to be a unique school. We've had a lot of things happen um, every day, and uh, and uh, and so what you're looking at is uh, just sort of the cover of, of the Todd Blast that we send out every week, which uh, includes a message from me, uh, which uh, sometimes has a video attached, and depending on what's going on, it gives the, the parents, uh, and it also goes to students as well, uh, just an overview of what's going on, so you get the message. And you, do I, you have the yeah, great. So, um, so just some of the things you'll see um, uh, that we do every year, but certainly during this year has been different. So you can see that these are this is a video for course selections for ninth graders. So, uh, Mrs. Camber and Miss Gill sent the video out uh, not only for the parents but also for uh, actually for all students for both because this was at a time where we, we didn't have students in that much. So basically all students got that information. So that video, uh, you know, we just used the technology and uh, they used that video for going over course selections where they used to go into classrooms. They were now just doing them remotely. Yep, you can keep going. You just click again. Yep, there you go. Hi everyone, welcome to ninth grade course you selections. I'm Kristen Hill and yeah. I'm this. Uh, so just some of, the, some of the things that it looks like uh, in terms of like some of the, uh, how it looks uh, visually, uh, you know, the uh, Diana Petraka and Tina Jark, who, who do the um, Todd Blast, do a great job of kind of just bringing things to parents' attention so it's clear so they can see it. So this was about the update of where um, we were going to be coming in more. Uh, this is some of uh, what we like to share with, with what's been happening in different classrooms. Uh, this is seventh graders working on their uh, art projects. Um, and you can see them finishing up their glazing and, and working on different things. Next one, you've got Mrs. Rogers and Mrs. Walsh in their eighth grade science classes. And here we're showing all the different uh, work that they're doing with kinetic and potential energy, uh, different investigations they're doing. And I could pause here. We don't see any pictures here, but, but uh, at home, students are doing something similar, and we've had them in other blasts where you can see that the students do the experiments, the remote students do the experiments at home as well, um, which is great. You know, we've really tried to, to bridge that for both our in-person students and our remote students. Um, and, you know, we'd like to show this to the parents, uh, you know, and, and the kids like to see themselves as well in the pictures. Uh, next, uh, this is the sixth grade social studies reading theater, uh, where you can see students at home and in person at different parts and different Greek myths, and they performed it together. You know, that's another feature that we've, you know, that we've really tried to use during the hybrid instruction, is to have both the remote students and the in-person students working together. You know, you can do that on documents, you can do that in small meets, and it's been really a good way to keep the community together. Because even though we're not all in the same building all the time, we're still together as a family and as a community. And it's this kind of work that, um, that, that, that illustrates that. You can't have you know, a fax class without mini pizzas and without your, you know, uh, without your chocolate chip cookies. This is the pizza time. And also Mr. Scanlon, uh, which you see when you come in here, we have our pickup station out here for the remote students. Uh, you'll they, he sends home the ingredients and the students uh, make, you know make the make make whatever they make the uh, the cookies or whatever they're making um, at home which is just a great thing of trying again keep everybody connected keep everybody together which uh, you know I, 
you know, we've been really blessed. Uh, I think that our community has done a really fine job. I'm very proud of Todd Middle School for what they've done during this. Um, and, you know, and again, this is something that just kind of shows that. Uh, this was another social studies class uh, where this was a, one of our teaching assistants, Miss Sauer, brought back uh, from China um, some of these um, uh, statuettes, and um, you know, it was part of a part of a class that uh, the students were able to view those and, and look at those and make comments on those. The March Mammal Madness, which. Uh, this is, I think, maybe the fourth year that Miss Joy has done this, where, uh, you know, uh, as we know, we have the basketball March Madness. So she does it where you have different mammals going against each other, you know, in a survival <laughs> of the fittest. And uh, she, but it's, it's, it's very involved. So there is a, there is, you know, you look at their habitats, you look at, you know, uh, uh, how they survive in the wild and everything, and it's, and it's great. And, uh, uh, this year, uh, Benjamin Raz was our winner, um, and I and I think Miss Burns might have been our, our teacher winner. But uh, it's something now that's been the you know four years in a row, and we put posters up, and it's actually outside. There's a you know a big board that, that has the countdown. Is it true? The red kangaroo prevail? I think it was the red. Uh, yeah, you don't have to play that, but uh, this this yes, I do believe it did. So this is the sixth grade uh, chorus winter concert which I showed some of these at some points during the board meeting, but the music farm has done an outstanding job. I mean, you, you listen to the music, I don't even know how they do it. Um, you know, they, they just do a great job seeing the students in their, um, you know, all in their own houses, playing their instruments, again, staying part of the community. And I gotta say, you know, as I walk by the music rooms, um, you know, you hear teachers talking to, remote students and they're practicing you can hear it right through the computer what they're doing and it's been great I mean they really have have done a tremendous job of keeping students um, engaged and keeping them really well learning I mean that's what we do here you know we're, we're, kids are here to learn and uh, and they've continued to learn even though it's been you know challenging our, our students of the quarter which um, we usually have two students per grade um, but this year we, we went to three because we had the cohort A, we had the cohort B, and we had the remote cohort. So, uh, so now we have three students of the quarter, and I've got to say it has been, uh, it has been really special doing those, um, especially when we have, you know, a student um, who is at home and we've got, you know, five or six teachers and myself on a Google Meet and we're talking about why the students, the student of the quarter and mom or dad or grandma or auntie or whoever is, you know, like kind of there with us while we're talking because what we do for student of the quarter is talk about what makes those students special and while academics it, it is important, uh, it's really about all of those other pieces of, of, of a person, which is their character and who they are and how they care about other people. And those are the things that really are uh, the underpinnings of student in the quarter. And, uh, and so it's been really, it's been great. Um, and you know, we've shared pictures of them too, you know, on, the, on, on, our, on our top blasts. Uh, we had a St. Patrick's Day 5K, and you can see various staff members and uh, students who were involved. And we've been doing this, you know, with, with things that we can't do together, students do on their own. I know uh, that the intramurals, they had different races and stuff, and they would just do them on their own. They would keep track on their own. And, um, and sometimes they do things at the same time, but just in different space. And, um, and it's just really, again, been a good way to keep everybody part of the community because we know that there was, you know, during this, uh, you know, there was a, uh, isolation and sort of you know that physical distance but I have to say there hasn't been a lot of social distance it's been a lot of physical distance but not a lot of social distance you know um, middle school you, you, that's, that's not going to happen uh, we like we wanted to highlight cleaning you know that's done in the school our custodial staff does a wonderful job and you can see me there down in the corner doing the hand sanitizing before they come into the cafeteria. And, uh, you know, and we've, it's been, you know, this week, 
I've been, uh, I'm, really, I'm just so proud of the students because between every period, Mr. Cormier and I stand in the hallway because, you know, we want to make sure that everybody is, you know, staying spaced because, you know, we have all the kids in the hallway for the changing of, of the periods. And the kids have just done a really great job. I mean, they are really, I mean, not, you know, um, they've just done a really great job. They've done a great job with their masks. They've done a great job with understanding, you know, the, 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 the physical distancing that, that we need. And for, for middle school students, uh, we're just so proud of them. And we're really proud of our custodial staff of what they do. And you can see, you know, in the middle picture there, you've got the, the, uh, san the, the, san the, the sanitizer that we use uh, in the lunchroom. And, um, you know, we really, we've continued to stay vigilant with that. You know, we want our schools to stay open and we do that um, by staying vigilant and, you know, doing what we've been doing the entire school year. Uh, sports, you know, that's a really important part of not just the Spag and Kill community, but also for, for, for youth growing up. And, and we, you know, put in information uh, for the Spag Spring Sports, you know, in our, uh, in our blast. Uh, this, uh, you know, and then we'll have things like you know, when we uh, when we went to our uh, what I call um, hybrid 2.0, where we had kids coming in four days a week. You know, we we knew that uh, we were we were going to have a lot of uh, parents dropping students off. So uh, you know, we kind of laid out um, a, uh, a way, how we were going to do that. And I've got to say, the parents have done uh, just an outstanding job. I mean, it has been really so helpful, and it's been, it's been safe. Uh, yesterday, I sent a UPS person into, into the school building, which he didn't need to come, but he was listening to me because I had my red vest on. <laughs> and he said, I said, what'd you pull? He said, well, you're telling me to pull it. He didn't actually have to come in. But uh, the parents have done it just a great job. And, uh, and it, it's really been, you know, something, you know, part, part of, of sort of, of being together in this is to try to alleviate stress. You know, there's a lot of stress, which is what built, we've got a lot of stressors, and normally, and then in a pandemic, so we've tried to, to, to plan things out so that way, you know, so parents, when it was picking up, it wouldn't be a stressful situation, and we try, and they, but they've done a really great job. I uh, just want to point out, kudos to, to Mr. Dort. He really thought about, he was outside trying to figure out, he was working with, with their SRO, Steve Dowdy, he was out there, and really, your brainchild worked. I mean, you you had talked about that, and would it take just like two days? You know, maybe um, he also put together a video and sent it home to the families to to do it. So, uh, um, just appreciate the, how serious you took it, and and it really worked out because you hear stories at other places how how zany it is, you know, getting in and out. So. Uh, um, you, you knew that from the start, so I, we appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Dorian. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this, and then we'll give kind of like, uh, it's a little hard on the eyes, but we like to put things in there that like stick out, so that way it's like, hey, these are the odd and even days, you know, because it's really important students need to have, um, uh, you know, they need organization, they need structure, and uh, I will say, you know, I think that, uh, I think the executive functioning of students overall, I think that the pandemic has helped because I think they had no choice. They had to do those things. And, uh, and we try to help them and the parents, you know, because that's the other thing. You know, parents are, I mean, uh, we are just so thankful to the parents in the district. There's many frontline workers. Um, there are many parents who are working from home while they're trying to, you know, assist their, their children. And so we know that the more clear that we can be to them about what we need, uh, what's going on in the school, the better. So we, we appreciate all their support. Uh, I talk about Mr. Yurkovic from time to time, and there's a reason because uh, because he's a great person, and we're just so grateful that he's part that he is, you know, he is our security guard here at the front desk. But he's so much more, and um, he gives math challenges, and there's and he's got a website, and the students, uh, you know, he creates them, and the students answer these questions. I've attempted to, I, I almost got one right, but I still I got it down to two answers but I couldn't narrow it down but he's just done a wonderful job and, and I wanted to just uh, bring him up again because uh, we're really grateful to him he's always here he's he's just uh, and, and like I said he, he also always put he's he, he likes science as well so like when there's uh, things going on um, in the space program the student he has them live on his he's got the cam on 
So you can, as you walk by his desk, you can see when they're doing, you know, uh, different things on shuttles or, or out in space, doing space walks, the students can see it when they come by. Uh, but, you know, Sparrow's Nest, we're still involved in community service, trying to help community, uh, community service uh, entities that we know need our support. We got, I think, Dr. Fanuelli's in that picture. Uh, so, you know, we continue to do work with that with our dress down days. And um, we have, there's a 5K that we did. So we continue to, you know, do that work, even though it's a pandemic, we, we continue to, 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 to try to do the things that we know that is important to the community. Uh, I've talked about these before, and these are the Mindful Brain Breaks, which um, I'm just very proud of our counseling staff. Um, they, I asked if they can make 15, and I, I think they're actually going to make 30, wow. which is great. You know, uh, we've, we've surpassed the 15 because they, they enjoy them as well. And, uh, you know, basically they're, they're anywhere from two to five minutes, and they could be watched at anywhere. We have them on the website. Uh, they could be used by parents, teachers, students, um, uh, pretty much anybody who goes to the website because it's open to the public. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's a great thing of trying to, you know, just bring more to what we do because we knew that the need was there. And, uh, and these are going to be there forever. You know, we can use them forever, um, which is just a great thing. You're going to have to click one. There you go. And, uh, of course, now this slide looks very different from all the rest because this is the one I made. <laughs> um, that this is not the one that was made by Diana and Tina, who just do an amazing job on the Todd Blast. I, I mean, it really amazing. What's, you know, what's great is they bring to life what it is at Todd because we do amazing things here, and they actually make the blast you know, kind of uh, mimic that, which is that it's colorful, it's, uh, yeah. it's important, and it's things that, you know, that I think are, that you don't always see, you know, if you were looking at just, you know, kind of from the outside. Um, and also a really big thank you uh, to the Todd staff, because all of this, all of this content that's in here is all generated by the staff. Uh, and their and their kind of inter uh, and, the, and, the, and the way that they interrelate and work with the students and the parents because it's all part of something which I, I you know as an educator for you know 20 plus years um, I never really even though I kind of knew that I, I never really felt it to such a level as I do during this school year and last year of just and, and how grateful I am for Spagnacle because we are, it is, it's a, it's a really unique, great place. I mean, the size helps, it's small, but also it's just really the, the people involved. And I think in many ways, um, the pandemic has, has brought that out, even though it's brought out a lot of um, things that are, are unpleasant and that are, that are tough to deal with. It's, it's also brought out a lot of things of, of who we are as people and not just here, but you know, everywhere. So. Um, so that was my that was my report to try to give you a piece of Todd over the last couple of months and to uh, show you some uh, to show the community the work that that the Todd Blast uh, it was, you know puts out on a weekly basis. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Really enjoy those inside looks. Uh, what's going on inside the doors and inside the halls. Terrific to see that. Uh, both Steve and you Dan really enjoyed that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to add uh, to Mr. Malcolm and Mr. Dowdy. Uh, I really enjoy both of your updates. Uh, it's good to see the energy and the excitement that's going on. I mean, I mean, it seems like you know the kids all, especially like, hey, now I want to go see the play. Seems like I should send more kids to the middle school, you know, right now, but it seems like a lot of good things going on, so thank you for the updates. Thank you. Mr. Lewis and Mr. Comier, thank you too, right? You're part of the, you're part of the presentation. Thank you for being here and uh, um, supporting and contributing to all that work. Yeah. They're doing for some. Okay. All right. So that's uh, takes us to the correspondence section, I think, of the meeting. All right. Any comments from the board uh, beyond what uh, we've had a chance to share? Uh, 
already? Yeah. Uh, just one thing really quick. The concession stand makes some nice progress there. I like seeing that. Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention, I'm not sure if you're aware, but when the ACE uh, kids that were involved with that and the preliminary design, they were going to get a plaque with their names on that, and I wanted to make sure that that wasn't forgotten. It, I don't think it has not been forgotten. I don't think it's been produced yet, but uh, it has not been forgotten. And there's also uh, bricks we're working on, too. Uh, Mr. Malkisher is aware of all this um, for uh, last year's senior class and some other uh, members uh, of, our, of our Spec and Kill community. So now it's, it's we're not there yet, but now it has not been forgotten. But it's good to, to uh, bring it up. The, and what, what he's referring to is they actually the students designed um, the concession stand, so that's kind of neat. And it would actually be there, you know, hopefully forever. And uh, it was a student design, so that's pretty cool. And check it out. I think the the height, of the, it's, the, all the walls are built. You know, it's up up to the height. You know, and uh, the roof's coming soon. So uh, we're excited. It, it looks like progress. Um, I, I walked through it uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Lanzoni uh, last week, and it's cool. You see the outline of the bathrooms, and some plumbing's roughed in. It's it's interior walls. I think are are set up too, so the rooms are all. Yeah, you can you can kind of see. You see the uh, the size of things, and uh, it is going to be well utilized. You know, it's a, you know a perfect complement to to you know the field and the bleachers and, and, and the track. The timetable, I believe, is, is that it would be completed by the time for festivities in the spring, right? The graduation. That's the whole right? You, uh, you, know, you, you don't want to say that live so everyone would know that. But uh, um, what we, I ask that, every meeting we have, I ask that question. I know Michelle's listening. I, I always ask that. You know, we want that, uh, you know, ready in June um, and ready for, uh, you know, our commencement exercises. Um, and it'd be a perfect place to kind of... Uh, you know, cut the cut the ribbon, or you know, whatever we're gonna do there. Uh, and that's our goal, and it's on course for that. But there's always something. But right now, it's still on course, so we're we're happy there. Uh, board correspondence. There was a, a communication to the board back uh, end of March, I believe the 29th of March, regarding the prospect of a student possibly sitting on the board um, of trustees. Uh, as is the practice at some other schools in the district, so that's something the board has taken note of, and we'll be discussing uh, maybe uh, you know at our uh, point where we, where we reorganize and look forward to next year. I expect that might be a good time to talk about that. Any other comments? Uh, for me, for you, um, I guess I'd say you know there were some some guidance from the New York State Department of Health that were that came out over the weekend or late Friday um, we have been processing them you know, every day since we've been back over the weekend in the past couple of days tomorrow there is uh, our weekly uh, meeting with uh, the DBCH you know the Dutchess County Department of Health and um, so we're processing and, and you know I don't expect major changes to what we're doing we have we We've been lucky. We developed a plan, um, brought students back. You know, I think some schools that didn't bring students back yet are, are now going to use this guidance to help bring them back. But there's still some things that you know we we could change or tweak and make better. And after tomorrow's meeting, I think we'll have a a better sense of what those changes will look like. Uh, but minor, you know, I think uh, we we've we've done a lot of things in in accordance with our our, our local health department and and. Knock on wood, right? Um, it's, it's, it's working, so uh, you know we hope to uh, make a couple tweaks, but continue what we're doing. You know, we're we're proud that we got back before break. Uh, we're proud that we're still offering a, a solid remote, you know, education for for students. You know, we're able to do both, and our teachers have been amazing with everything again uh, to be able to do that. So, uh, you know, we our plan fits very well with what came out over the weekend and. You know, we had tomorrow we'll have a meeting. We'll, we'll go forth uh, after that. And I guess I'd just like in closing to thank again the if the students from the for, uh, participation in government class are still with us. Thanks for, for attending. Uh, congratulations again to all of our uh, newly tenured teachers. 
uh, congratulations to the students who are working so hard on the spring musical. Um, but great to see uh, all of this energy and a special debt of gratitude to all of those in the administration. Uh, Michelle, Paul, Sandra, all of them, all of you who worked so hard on, on getting the budget ready. And uh, encouraging that we can now move forward and, and get ready to uh, publicize this you know, to the community for the vote in May. So with that, uh, closes our business, I believe. So do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? 